Hello. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, this is David here with Day Trade Like a Pro. Um, I just want to confirm that everyone can hear me. Maybe if you just post a question or post something in the chat or something, just say yes. Yep. Okay, great. Um, fantastic. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, today we are talking about prediction points and RBI. We have a special treat that both uh, Ephraim who runs day trade like a pro is the head trader uh, and oversees all the coaching and development for day trade like a pro is with us going to give us some training and then we've, we're joined by Justin uh, for those of you that are in the discord room that's J trader and know that he has a very very killer system leveraging prediction points in RVI and so you are in for a treat and really have a great opportunity to learn some some exciting things about uh, trading and and see if this can help you out uh, in your trading. So, Ephraim, with that, I will pass it off to you. Okay, great. I think, um, let's see, here we go. I can make me the, I don't want to do that one. Okay, great. I'm going to share, am I sharing the right screen here? You're good. Okay, good. All right, well, welcome. I recognize some of the names of some of you who are here. And like David said, I am the founder and the CEO here at Day Trade Like a Pro. I'm the head trader. I run our map. And um, in my free time, they let me come up with new ideas for uh, other tools that we want to roll out and things that we want to make available to our traders. So. Uh, thanks for being here. I'm excited. This is what we, this is the first of what we intend to be many uh, different uh, versions of webinars like this. We have, if if you're unaware, we have a group in Discord, and unlike Wall Street Bets, we have not been uh, kicked off of Discord, and uh, we have a really phenomenal group there. Who has, uh, I mean, anyone who's in that group. We'll certainly uh, talk about how they've been, how helpful the group has been in helping them get to where they are in their trading. And Justin is one of those traders in there that's uh, been helpful in, in helping other traders. And so I'm excited for what he's going to show us here today. I'm not going to take a lot of time. I want to just run through a couple of things. So um, this is for educational purposes and um, yeah, that's what I'll say about that. You need to read this, please understand that everything we're gonna talk about here um, is uh, under this um, disclaimer, disclosure, any past results certainly do not guarantee future performance and trading futures is inherently risky and you're likely to lose all of or more than all of your money and you need to understand how margin and leverage works before you were to ever uh, make any trading decisions and you should certainly not use anything that we're going to present to you here today to make trading decisions this is really for education so with that being said i want to talk to you real briefly about what all institutional traders use to make trade uh, to make decisions. So I want you to just picture for a minute, there's a trader with tens of millions or even hundreds of millions in buying power. And what is it that you think that they're using to make decisions of where to buy and sell? You know, they're probably not looking at and saying, well, where's the MACD? And, uh, you know, a lot of these indicators, they're probably not using moving averages. Um, they're really determining it based on one thing, and that's price. And then we could pull up any chart in any market, and what we would see is that the market basically went back and forth between certain uh, points, different prices, all day, all week, all month, all year. And we wanted to know how do you, um, you know, basically how can you uh, know all that ahead of time? So why doesn't everyone just use price? I mean, some traders are using price action, they're using different candlestick patterns, whatever. But, um, you know, that's the, most traders don't trade the way we're gonna show you here today. M one of the things that we have talked about a lot at Day Trade Like a Pro, 
is this flea market trader mentality. So traders go from one thing to the next thing to the next thing to the next thing, and they're always hoping to find the next thing. And they're looking for, you know, what's the thing that's going to finally work? If I can learn how to read a chart the right way, or I can get that magic indicator or whatever. And the reality is, is that there is no, you know, anyone who became an Olympic gold medalist didn't get there by eating Wheaties in the morning. That's not how it worked. They lied to you in the commercials. They got there by putting in extraordinary amounts of time and work into mastering their craft. And there's really no way around that. Um, the bad news is, is it's you're probably more, it would probably be easier to win a medal or at least go to the Olympics than it is to become a consistently profitable trader. And the problem is there's so much confusion out there and so many indicators and everyone you know wants to know what works. So you have this flea market trader mentality of people going around and looking for all the right secret sauce. And then you have all these so-called gurus out there that are more than happy to sell all that stuff. And so it's a really a recipe for disaster. And then the other thing is, is uh, not being able to map out the market ahead of time, which Justin's going to get into a bit today. So if you can't beat them, then just join them, um, which how do you identify high probability trade locations where the big money is likely to trade? And then how do you identify where that trade's invalid and then identify targets where the big money is going to drive the market? So in 2007, we created an algorithm and it identifies these prices for us each day. And they really have this unique ability to adapt to market movement and changes in volatility and then also to forecast that volatility. So if you trade the S&P 500, I'll give you an example of one of the things that we said in our map service today was that the market still needed to come back. So it moved up into the 3820s. And we said it really needed to come back down and test. Uh, and any, I know we have traders here that are in map. We said uh, it needed to come back and test 3796, 3773, and eventually 3760 to 55 area. And then I've updated that in MAP and said maybe even down to 53. But all of that is because of what prediction points in the picture that they're painting. So I wanna give you a couple of examples. So here's a chart and I could show you um, a, a lot of different charts. This is just, uh, these lines are prediction points. They were there way before the market ever traded there. They were, you know, we had them the day before. Here's another example. This is not really a great day, but still plenty of opportunities to make money on a day like this. Here's another example. Uh, that's an all-time high at the time. That's within two points of that all-time high. So uh, here's, again, another example. And um, prediction points. Here's one thing I want to say about prediction points. And it's likely that a number of you that are here know about prediction points, but Justin's going to talk a little bit more about that. He's going to talk about how his system, uh, what he's developed around working with prediction points. He also uses other things that he's looking at for support and resistance. And then at the end of the webinar here today, we're going to give you an opportunity to try prediction points for free for um, an entire month. And so stay tuned and we'll give you the information of where to do that. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Justin. And let's see here. So Justin, I can make you a presenter. Okay. And then you should be able to share your screen and I should not be sharing mine anymore. Does that seem right? Let's go and give it a shot here. So I just wanna say a couple of things about Justin. So he is, um, we convinced him to do this. And um, he, I, I think probably about a year or so, Justin, you and I have been um, working together. Yeah, you, it's you, been a good like year and a half now. Yeah, yeah so a year and a half. And when, and, and what I would have you know about Justin is he's a phenomenal uh, analyst. He has a really amazing ability to look at the market identify these high probability areas. And then what he's gonna show you in the system is in real time, um, being able to go yet, yeah, you know, sort of determining the odds of a trade, how good a trade is at any given time. And then how do you know which ones, which areas do you leave alone and which areas do you wanna buy? When do you wanna maybe get bigger in a trade? Those kinds of things. So um, mm -hmm. I would listen closely. And I think if you do that, you're gonna really get 
some real value out of today. And then um, we'll show you how you could uh, continue here. Besides uh, using prediction points, Justin's actually going to be teaching a course on what he does here. But the point of today is to really get into and have some value here for you. So um, with that, we'll, Justin, it's all yours. Awesome. Well, everyone can hear me okay? Loud and clear. You can see my chart, or if you can see my screen. Yep, we're good. Great. Well, I'm really excited to be here, guys. Um, first of all, let me just thank everyone for being here. Um, re really appreciate I know me and Ephraim really appreciate um, you guys taking some time out of your day to join us. And I want to, again, thank Ephraim and Daytra Like a Pro for giving me the opportunity to share my system. Um, I truly think I have one of the best intraday trading systems in the world. And so I have a lot of valuable trading information to share with you and obviously a really powerful trading system. So um, because I'm limited on time, I want to jump right into it here. So um, the name of the system, JTF, that's short for JTrader Futures. And if anyone is familiar with my online presence on Facebook or Twitter, they know that I go by JTrader and I have, uh, my pages are called JT Futures. So for lack of a better term, I just have a generic JTF trading system. So if anyone has a sexier name for the system, don't hesitate to leave it in the comments. I'll definitely t uh, take a look at it. Um, so let's just jump right into it here. My system has three pillars. And these three pillars, each one of them in and of themselves could be systems on their own. So the real power is when you take all these different systems that all work and you combine them into a really powerful system, which is what I did here. So the first pillar of the system is price action. And that's really the foundation, I think, of a lot of trader systems. Um, I don't care if you're trading order flow or you're looking at market profile or you have some fancy indicator system. At the end of the day, like Ephraim said, and many have said in the past, price is really king. And so when I talk about price action, what I'm talking about is support and resistance. I'm talking about retracement levels, like uh, it's also known as Fibonacci or Fibs. And then I'm looking at the overall trend in the market and what the candlesticks are telling me for kind of a context in the market. Now, if you're a new trader and you've, um, you're very new to technical analysis, or let's say you're an experienced trader and you happen to have three or four or five different indicators on your chart, and you have signals and all these alerts, and you don't seem to be getting anywhere, you're not making any money. What I would suggest to you is to take everything off your chart and just look at price and learn all the basics of price action because that's really what's gonna give you that strong foundation for whatever system you end up um, finding that you like. Now, the second pillar in my system is relative volatility index. And this is an indicator. It's the only indicator that I have on my chart. And just to say really quickly, there is a, another indicator that's labeled as RVI. So be careful when you look at your, um, your trading software, if it says RVI, just confirm that it's relative volatility index because there's another indicator called relative vigor index. And it's a completely different thing. So just make sure that doesn't get mixed up there. Now, I use relative volatility index in a similar way to RSI, and it's really because RVI is about the same as RSI. And what I mean by that is they both use the same equation. It's just that relative volatility index uses the standard deviation of prices on um, one of the variables rather than the absolute price change in RSI. And what I found is that it's very reactive to price, much more so than RSI. And I've been watching this indicator now for, I don't know, three, maybe four or five years. And my eyes have grown very accustomed to it. And I just, I just like the way it works for me. And so that's what I built this whole system around. Now, I'm, I'm typically looking at the indicator for divergence. 
And um, there's a lot of different indicators out there that you can use for divergence. You have your stochastics, or you can look at cumulative delta, you know, MACD, and then obviously RSI. But like I said, this is what I've kind of settled on, and I think it's one of the best for my style of trading. Um, with divergence, it's giving me a lot of different information. Um, I, can, I can see where there's um, potential exhaustion in the market. I can see where we could potentially continue in a move. Um, also with multi time frame analysis, I can pick out some of the more major reversals or turns in the market. Um, the indicator itself is very comprehensive. So um, just like RSI, it's giving you kind of an under the hood look at the strength in the market. And so along with strength, you're going to get a lot of indications of what price should be doing or potentially doing. Because remember, as traders, nobody knows what's going to happen next. All we can do is build an edge that gives us somewhat of a probability of what should be happening. Um, now, I met Ephraim, like I said, about a year and a half ago, and Ephraim was mentoring me. And at the time, I was scalping for like a point or two points using this system with the with the RBI and the price action. And he really kind of changed the whole my whole system. He really leveled me up and he got me thinking about trading for larger targets. And um, so one of the things he suggested was to put prediction points on my chart. Now, me being me being a hot, you know, kind of cocky guy, I was like, well, well, I don't need these levels. I've got I've got support and resistance levels, I've got fib levels. I don't need these levels, right? So I put them on my chart and I watched them. And sure enough, in a very uncanny way, the market just seemed to react at these levels. And a lot of the times they lined up exactly with some of the other things in my system. So uh, the more I watched, the more I was more impressed with how they work. And so um, can anyone guess what my third pillar would be <laughs> in the trading system here? Is gonna be prediction points. So just as a quick definition, now I know Ephraim covered a little bit about them. They are proprietary levels that indicate areas in the market that have a high probability of reaction. And so with them, um, it really helps me as a roadmap. And we're gonna get into examples um, and where you're gonna see how it really lays out a lot of the key areas that the market's gonna react to um, throughout the day. And so it gives me that roadmap and it gives me a really good context. Uh, it also works for long-term targets. Like I said, I was having trouble kind of having confidence in those longer-term targets. But with the prediction points, since they're so reliable, um, it started to give me confidence to look for big moves. Um, on top of that, it's all, they're also very good areas for entries. So altogether, it's really when you put everything together, you have three individual systems that all work on their own. And when you put them together and you get confluence between all of them, that's where you start to get really true power, where you can get razor sharp entries and you can start to see where the market is expected to turn. And then also see where you're gonna have those bigger reversals. So without further ado, I wanna jump right into the charts and just start going through all the different pieces of this system. So let me pull up a chart. And I'm not really sure, can everyone see the whole chart? I wanna make sure it's not cut off. Yeah, we can see it. You can see the whole thing? Yep. Okay. Um, now, who out there, I know that there's a lot of traders that are in here right now, and I'm sure a lot of them are familiar with support and resistance. Um, are there any um, people in here that aren't really familiar with support and resistance? Is there a way I can see the chat? I'll just tell you if we see anything in the chat. Okay. Is there anybody out there that isn't like familiar with what support and resistance is or how it works? Nothing? <laughs> no one's no one's acknowledging it, so I think nope. you're good. Okay. Well, I'm gonna just do a quick primer since everyone probably already understands. Support and resistance is where you find 
price having trouble breaking through a level. So resistance is when you have price coming up to a level and it's having trouble breaking through. Like you can see here, we have price trying to break through this level. It pulls back, it ends up having trouble a second time. So this becomes a resistance point on the, on the chart. And what you're going to see time and time again is price is going to react here. And then when it finally does push through, when price comes back to that level, you're going to get a reaction. And it's not every time, but you will see it happen time and time again. You've got another example just right here off this next ledge here. You can see you had resistance. resistance. So if we throw a line up there, you can see how that line then became a support. Once we broke through, it was they were ha the I guess the bears in this instance were having trouble pushing through. When we did push through and then broke back over, sure enough, it became another support line. So you can go through the market and you can mark out all these levels and they're kind of everywhere. This is a 60 minute chart, oh, wrong line. This is a 60 minute chart. So as you can imagine, when you start dialing this down and you go to a one minute or a five minute in your intraday trading, you're gonna have a lot of relevant levels and the question is which levels are going to actually have a reaction as you can see this level worked great a bunch of times but then it broke right through and then it worked again here and then we busted through so when you start putting these levels on your chart you end up having so many that the question is where is the market actually going to react now let me just say that there are a lot of successful traders making a lot of money just trading support and resistance so it is its own system in and of itself. So what I also do is I then look for fibs and I'm assuming with a lot of traders in here that most people are familiar with retracements or what's known as Fibonacci retracements. Um, so let me just do a really quick primer on that and uh, essentially what it's doing is it's telling you what percent of a move in the market is being retraced by price. And what you want to look at is, so in order to define a move, what you need to have is a hook on the top and a hook on the bottom. And really the way to truthfully define it is when you're in this uptrend and you have your final high bar here, you need to wait for that the low of that bar to be broken to get that hook. And you want that on both sides. And so then what you do is every trading platform is going to have this. They're going to have something called the Fibonacci retracement. So you're going to want to go to the top of the, of the leg. And, that, and that's how we define the leg was the curve on both sides. And you draw it down to the next leg. And what you're going to find is that price will re react off a number of these levels fairly reliably. Now it's very similar to support and resistance in that not it's not necessarily going to react every single time so um as you can see in this instance here we had a retracement that pushed up directly to the 38 percent and it's i guess it's hard to see there because this is a one hour bar but if you were to zoom in on shorter time frames you'd see it come all the way up here and then it pulled back right directly off the 38 and then when price eventually advanced up to the 50 you can see you had another reaction now this first reaction was something like over 10 points because we are on a uh, on a one hour chart here so these look like small little moves but that's a very tradable area right there same thing here you have something like i think 20 points or something and then ultimately it pulled up and then we had another reaction off the 61 now the three levels that we're really looking at in, Fib in Fibonacci analysis is 61.8, which that is the Fibonacci ratio right there. And I think that's where the name comes from. And then you have the 50% and you have the 38.2. Those are gonna be the most relevant and that's where you're gonna see the most reactions happen. Not to say that some of these others will not, but those are the, the big top three. Now, like I said, when you define these legs, these legs are all over the place. If you notice this low to this high is also its own little miniature leg. In fact, this little high to this little low is also a leg. And 
believe it or not, if you were to go through and measure all these, these levels are relevant. Let me try to redraw this so you don't get it covered. And you can see that sure enough, price came down just a tick in front of the 38 and bounced. It came to the 50 and bounced, and then it came just in front of the 61 and bounced. So you can see how powerful these levels are because it just seems to happen time and time again. Now, the thing is, is that these legs, like I said, are everywhere. You can also draw it across the major low to the major high. And again, you have a reaction right in between the 50 and the 61 that ends up pushing us outside of this little pullback here. And you can also zoom out and you can see, well, we've got all these, we have a big leg right here. And sure enough, that big leg also had a reaction right in this 50% area. So this also is a very powerful tool and there are successful traders making a lot of money trading just Fibonacci. So then the problem comes as to how do you know which levels are going to work and how and which ones are not. And when you start to put all of these different things together, when you put a support and resistance level and it lines up with a Fibonacci level, now you have two things working for you. And so in this case here, you can see we had this resistance zone that went back in time where we were getting a lot of reaction. So when it came back down here, here's a great trade idea. You're at the 50%, you're right at this resistance zone. So now you have two things lining up for a potential good trade. Now, for me, this was kind of exactly what I was doing for a while but I discovered this thing called RVI. And like I said, I've been watching this now for years. And so my eyes are really, really accustomed to it. And what you're looking at here is you're gonna see that there's some zones on here. And these zones are telling you a little bit of information, like an underhood look at the market. So when this, the indicator itself, is bouncing from the 40 to the 80. So this whole zone above the green line, it's telling you that the market is really strong. And if I was to zoom out here, and let's see if I can do this. And we were to look at all of this price action in this whole run. And the problem with the S&P, which is what we're looking at, is it's basically just, you go back in time and it's just up, 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 up. So, but when you look at the indicator here, and you highlight this 40 to 80 zone, where does 90% of everything happen above the 40? And then if you look at where the market truly pulled back, and this is 120 points on the S&P, a pretty healthy uh, correction. And then we got a little push through, right? We got one here as well. So it's kind of showing you that, and I don't necessarily use this for a trade entry, but I'm just keeping in mind these areas, these zones. Um, now, the same thing for the downtrend, but as you can see, it's hard to give you an example here because we're so bullish here on the S&P. Um, now, there's a common misconception with RSI, and this is a really important thing to point out here. RSI, a lot of people will go, oh, it's at the 80, or sometimes they have the 70 mark, and they go, oh, it's overbought now, so we're gonna have, we're gonna, it's gonna go down. We need to sell. That couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, if you start to look at it and you, um, you see the market staying above the 40 and we're hanging out even up at 85 or whatever, 90, that's telling you you want to look for longs. You want to get in the market. Now, there's a lot of context and things behind that. And that's what I'm going to get into. If you want to continue with me and learn more about the course, we can get into all the details. But these are some things that I'm looking at now. The most important thing for me for trade entries and for context in the market is these divergences. Now, I'm guessing that most people here are also familiar with divergence. If you're not familiar with it, basically what it is, is you need to have two things to compare. So it could be cumulative delta and price. It could be cumulative delta and RBI, whatever. You have to compare two things in order for there to be a divergence, obviously. And so I'm using RBI to look for when price does something different from what the indicator does. And that's giving me um, a 
a lot of different indications of what's going on in the market. So there are two types of divergences. One type of divergence is called the classic divergence, and the textbook definition is that it's it's indicating a reversal. So here's a good instance right here. And there's also one right here. So you can see price comes up, it pulls back and it pushes up to a new high, but the indicator makes a lower high. So this is a classic reversal pattern, a classic divergence. But in most cases, when you're in a bullish trend and you get this signal, it's not telling you that the, the market is going to reverse and uh, trend is going to change or you're just going to drop uh, you know, a lot. It's telling you that there's actually some exhaustion in the move. So you can expect when you see this in a trend that price is going to correct a little bit. Now, when you start to pile on multi-time frame analysis and you get a, a confluence of signals at a certain spot, that's when you start to get more confidence that you're truly going to get a full-on reversal in the market. And you can almost reliably pick the top or the bottom. Now, the other divergence that I'm looking at is something called a hidden divergence. And a hidden divergence is, doing, is telling you the opposite of what the classic divergence is telling you. It's telling you instead of the um, price reversing, it's telling you that the price is gonna continue in the direction of what the trend that it's in. So there's two good examples here where you have price. Now, this is, again, a little micro trend, but you can see we are overall in this uptrend. We get a pullback, and then we start to make higher lows and higher highs out from this, from this region. So in this little local region here, we can expect that there's a possible trend, a bull trend. And you can see that when price pushed up and made its next higher low, another indication of a bull trend, you actually get a lower um, low on your indicator on RVI for me. And that's telling you again that the price is going to continue. And you can see it here again, when price pushed up from here and pulled back, we got another one telling us we were gonna continue. Now there's something really cool right here because now we can start building up confluence because not only do you have your divergence here, but you also have, look at this, previous resistance. So if I was to mark this resistance, we have a previous resistance zone and we have our divergence. And not only that, we also have a fib retracement of this leg lining up right there at the 50%. So that's where the true power starts to come in with this system. So I wanna start jumping into examples. I don't have a lot of time to get very specific with this stuff. So I'm gonna go back to the presentation here and we're gonna start looking at some examples. Firstly, I wanted to show you what it looks like if you were to just mark every single signal that you got um, for divergence. And you can see that from 5 a.m. to 2 p.m., this was on January 12th, you had 18 setups. And if you're someone that trades with indicators, I'm sure you've noticed that you're gonna get signals all over the place and you're using something to filter some of them out, I would think. But if you're having trouble with it, what I wanna show now is what prediction points bring to the table. So we have our support and resistance lines that we wanna watch. We have our FIB retracements, we have our divergences, but prediction points come in and this is a sideways day. It's the same day from the, the same range of time. And you can see how the context of the market is kind of set up ahead of time. These lines were all on here before any of this price happened. And when price held below this KP right here, which is one of the levels, we pushed down and found support right at the next one. Something I wanna say real quick, when we have prediction points, like you see this blue line, this is one of the other prediction point levels. When you have them that more than 10 to 12 points apart, I typically, and a lot of the traders in our community will put a 50% in between them because it's such a highly reactive zone that we've noticed over time. So 
you can see here it was the high of the day and the 50 percent between the two was the low of the day now a lot of times the actual prediction point will be but these are very important areas and so you can see it held the 50 we pushed directly back to the kp right we got a little pullback almost back to kp then back up to it and then the 50 percent zone was support so these lines really, um, really open things up for me. Um, and there's a great trade example right here. So prediction points are great areas to have entries, but they're also telling you context like, okay, we couldn't break above this one. We came down below it. So we're probably going to go to the next level. And we sure did. We actually bounced directly off it there and then continued to the 50% here. So in this instance, we did not have the, the prediction point lining up exactly with our with our with the rest of our setup, but in um, when I'm using prediction points, I like to use them again for range and context and for entries, but it's like an icing on the cake. So if I have three or four things lining up, but prediction point isn't there, that's okay, as long as all the other check marks are there. Um, if the prediction point is there, then it, again, it's like icing on the cake. So let me, I just want to show you here, this leg, again, from this low to this high, you draw your fib and you know, as we're breaking down here, you have three levels. And it just so happens that 38% lines up exactly with this previous resistance point. So now we have a resistance point, a Fibonacci, and then as we approach, we're looking at our indicator and we're going, something's not right here. We've got a major divergence setting up. And so that ended up becoming a great entry. I want to jump in to a, um, not a range day, but a trending day. This happened to be the week before. I don't know if you guys remember the second week of January. It was just sideways for the whole week. It was like seven days. Um, so I wanted to pick a, a trending day so you can see some different examples. Now this vertical line here on the left is where the market, um, uh, a market closed here. And so this was like the afternoon of the 6th. And then on the other side here, on the futures market, this is where Globex opened at 6 p.m. on the East Coast. Typically within that first half hour, um, the, the prediction points are given out. And so all these lines were on the chart since we, around this area when we opened. And again, we have these 50% lines. I forgot to put them in here. Um, but you can see that price came down in Globex and reacted directly off the 50% line between the two prediction points. And I didn't draw it on here because I didn't want to mess it up. But if you draw a leg from this low to this high, this happened to be exactly 38%. And if you notice the highs here on this candle, this was also a resistance point for 20 minutes because these are 10 minute bars. So this came up and bounced a bunch of times and then finally broke. So we had resistance and you know now you're starting to get the picture of how you start putting it all together right so um what i really want to point out on this slide is the context that the, the lines gave you the prediction points it ended up holding the 50 this whole time and it pushed directly to the kp making the high of the day and when it pulled back we got support off the prediction point so it's really powerful when you start putting all of it together to build up context and everything like that. Now on this slide here, I actually zoomed into this section. So we're gonna look at this and we're actually gonna look at two trade examples on how you would actually enter a trade. But I do wanna just point out again, you had the reaction at the 50%, great support off of these, great support, great resistance, right? And then it pushed all the way up and came right to the KP, and then right to the CP. And this is what I'm talking about when I was watching this stuff, just kind of being blown away with what was happening. Now, something to point out really quickly, if you see price coming down and you see all these lines close together, in prediction point theory, this is telling you that there's gonna be an area of congestion where you're gonna have a bunch of chop, potentially you're gonna have a bunch of chop. And sure enough, price came down and it reacted right off the CP. But if you were thinking in terms of risk and reward, what would be the best place to find a trade? It wouldn't be up here because you know that this is telling you that there's probably going to be some chop over here. So 
um, the best risk to reward would be to wait for price to advance down to the final level. And if you have everything lined up there, that's your best, most probable trade. Um, if you were to zoom in, and this is a 10 minute, you would see that it reacted off the first level. It poked a little bit through this and reacted off the second level and bounced. It reacted off the third, actually pushed through the third, and it, re it reacted off the final level. So every level was actually relevant on a very short time frame. Um, but overall, I think that prediction points for me really changed my game. And like I said, for longer targets, I was looking at, okay, well, if we held above here, then we're probably going to push at least to here and probably to there. So it's giving me more confidence in these zones. So let's go ahead and let's zoom right in to this example right here. So I zoomed in to a three minute. And obviously, when you start dialing down to shorter time frames, you're going to get a lot more noise. You're going to get a lot more signals. So if you notice here, the price found support here at that final prediction point. It held it. And then what happened was it actually started this what's called stair step action, where it bounced and found support here, bounced and found support here, and then we continued. And you're going to see that a lot with prediction points. So already we have a context going on that price is finding support down here. And then we got a final support off here. And we're also starting to make a higher high and a higher low compared to the previous ones. So now we have potential bull trend. And since we're holding above the CP, we're probably going to push to the next one. So now I'm looking for potential long signals with my indicator and then obviously looking for things to line up. And on this first little leg here, when we finally hold above the CP, our first pullback, if you were to draw your FIB as it curved here, you got a 38 right here. And then you can see in price, you had resistance right about here. And then as we advanced down to this level, we started getting that hidden divergence telling us that there's probably going to be a continuation in the market. And sure enough, it did push and we got up to the CP. So let me explain how you would enter a trade. The idea is you want to find the confluence of all the levels at a certain spot. And then you want to wait for price to advance to that area. And you want to watch your indicator to see if you're starting to see some type of irregularity. So when you see that divergence form on this candle, this becomes your signal candle. And you're really just waiting for the candle that's lining up with all the levels you like to show you that divergence. And when the next candle opens, you want to jump in as close to the low of the previous candle as you can. Now, I typically only keep a two point stop. And that's really because my statistics tell me that most of my great trades only need a few ticks or a point uh, of risk, usually. So, I don't like to take more risk than I actually need. So as far as stops go, you're gonna to have to work out what works for you and um, that's gonna, your statistics are gonna tell you that. So um, the key thing to know about the entry is that when you enter here, you wanna make sure that your stop, if it's two or if it's three or four points or whatever, and I'm talking in ES terms, I'm sorry, I know there's people trading on many different markets and I kind of forget because I really only look at S&P 500 futures. But you're gonna to wanna to make sure that whatever your entry is, you wanna make sure that whatever stop you're willing to take is at least a few ticks below that signal candle low in this instance. It'll be a, the high on this one. But you wanna make sure that there, it's a little bit behind that because the theory for the trade or the hypothesis for the trade is that you're actually going to bounce from that level and price should not come back there. And so you can see here, I typically go for something like a five and a 10 point, and it's not completely static based on price action and other things, I might move it up or down a little bit. But though my first two positions come off at, around those areas, and then my third position I hold for the next relevant prediction point. So you can see here, we got a five, a 10, and this ended up being, I think, about a 15, 18 pointer with a little bit of risk. 
And uh, that, that exit up by the prediction point, I always go about a point and a half in front because you're gonna see a lot of times that price will come very close and not quite touch it. And you wanna make sure, you know, you wanna ensure that you're actually getting filled. So once this trade closed, well, let me say very quickly, price filled me on my first position and came right back to my entry. So it really depends on how you manage your trades. A lot of times it will probably end up closing it out, but you know something? Every time I move my trade to break even, if I would have just left it behind the low of the bar that I was looking at, I would have gotten the whole move. So it's really up to you how you trade and how you um, do your risk management. And you really have to look at your statistics um, to tell you what the best uh, course of action is gonna be. Now, when we launched up here, you notice that we now got not a hidden divergence, but we got a reversal. And so, at this level, now there might have been other things lining up again as far as other FIB levels from other price action and stuff, but I just wanted to simplify this for, for the means of this presentation. And you can see on this bar here that has the arrow on, or the triangle on it, we got the divergence right in this zone. So now when this next bar opened right down over here, that's where I entered. And my stop was again for S&P 500, about two points which brought me about a point or, yeah, just about a point above the high of the signal bar. And again, I was able to get my five, my 10, and then my bigger exit was gonna go again, a point and a half in front of the other prediction point. And as you can see, it all worked out great here. And so this are just two examples of how you would enter a trade when you have everything lining up. Now, I think my time is up here. So I think we're going to jump to the end of the presentation. There's a question, Justin, if that, um, if your 38% level, is that drawn between the CPs? No, so the 38 is for that specific leg. Okay, got it. From that, yeah. okay, got it. Yep. Yes. Um, I do have one last example here. So if anyone has questions, please ask them now. Um, this is just an example of me actually putting a trade on the market. And I happen to have multiple time frames all telling me the same thing. So I had a one minute, I had a three minute, and I also had a tick chart all telling me that there was a classical divergence and we should have some kind of reversal. Now, because it was on three time frames, we could probably expect a bigger reversal. Um, but in this case, I like to put my exits just in front of these prediction points. So I was able to get, take off here. And then I had a static five below that. And then my third position was here. So actually these two here on the chart, I actually moved this. This was just when I took the picture. I moved this down to get just below the prediction point. And then I had another one here. So it ended up filling and that was the whole trade. And so that's just another example of what you're gonna be seeing on the live market. Um, this was the signal bar up here. Okay, I entered at 58.75, which was that yellow line right there, and it again pushed down. So um, I guess we're going to kind of wrap things up here. I don't know if there's one any... question, Justin, before yeah. you move over to that. Will you just show the example of a um, classic divergence and a hidden divergence? We just show the difference of that oh, one more sure. time. Yeah, let me. Um, I got to find the chart here. Okay, can everyone see that? Yep. yep. Okay, so a classical divergence is gonna be when price pushes, let me, let me get a, a clean example here. So right here you can see that price, and it's very subtle, and maybe I should find something that's really clear, um, like right here, okay? So price pushes to a new high, but the indicator makes a lower high. So you get this push up, and you get the opposite on your indicator. And that's what's known as a classical divergence. And that's telling you that there should be some type of reversal in price from that high. But again, remember, as, as far as context goes and all that, a lot of times it's just telling you that there's exhaustion in the market. The other kind of um, divergence- and, and I would just add another, and another thing to say to that, Justin, would be that all that would mean is that in your example of what you talked about, 
earlier, you said, I mean, in this case, you would want to be looking for buy opportunities. If you were using the RVI and you're looking at RVI and you're thinking, okay, it's still relatively strong. Mm -hmm. All that would really tell you is it's probably going to come back down lower a bit so that you yes. can get more buyers and then another leg back up. Yes, exactly. Yep. Um, now, the other divergence is known as a hidden divergence. And there's actually a really clear example right here. So you can see these are going to show up when you're actually in a trend, when you notice you're making higher highs, higher lows, or lower lower highs and lower lows in a downtrend. Um, so right here, you can see we pu we're pushing up. And when price goes from this low to this low, the indicator does the opposite and it makes a lower low. And so that's telling you that the market should continue, not reverse here, but continue in the direction of this trend, if that makes sense. Does that help? Yeah, that's good. Um, what platform? Yeah, this is NinjaTrader. Um, do we have uh, any other questions? I think that's good. I think you can, if you want to move on, and then if there's questions, we'll um, we'll answer those. Okay, great. So um, I'm going to be offering um, a month-long course where we're going to go into all of these concepts, and I'm going to break them down. Um, every week, we're going to look at different sections, and by the end of the month, we're going to build up a very powerful system that if you don't trade it exactly how I trade it, all the concepts and everything that you're going to get is going to produce a system and that you could customize and again have an extremely powerful system that you're going to be able to have very low risk entries and you're going to be able to forecast market moves into the future uh, forecast that there's potential market turns and again those major larger reversals using multi-time frame analysis so it's going to start on February 9th, and again, you're going to learn this system, and um, we're going to have four, so each week, we're going to have a 90-minute lesson, a class, and then another day that week, so this is a Tuesday, and then on Thursday, we're all going to meet on the live market. I'm going to share my charts. And we're actually going to trade all the concepts that we learned in class on the live market. So um, I think this is uh, a really great system. And again, everybody's going to have their own way that they trade. And if this doesn't fit your personality, then this is not the system for you. But I think for many people, they might be looking for something just like this. And really, my goal is to have a group of traders that all start to learn this system. And we have a great group of really good traders. We can all make money together. And uh, ultimately, I live to help other people. It, it really means a lot when someone tells me that some, some concept that I gave them helped level them up in their trading, helped them make money. It really makes my day. So um, I, if I can just add to that. So just, you know, as far as the context of the systems goes, I think, I think any trader that struggling to define their own system that works for them. This is something proven. It has, it's been, Justin's been using it for years and there's no one that knows this thing better than Justin. He knows this stuff hands down. Um, and this is a really, really great opportunity to, to spend time with him to learn that directly. There is, I, I think we're trying this new, there's a handout. If you guys look in the, I don't know, your little, window where you see questions or something that says a handout that says trade pp and rvi not sure if you guys can see that uh if you click on that you'll see the detailed syllabus course overview um the specific times and everything we will be sending that out to everyone so that they can um uh see that and look at that there as well so we'll send an email to everyone with all that information so you have it um, and there's a link on there. If you do want to sign up for the course, um, there's a link on there to click on it and sign up for it accordingly. And let me just say really quickly, um, I did a lot of deep searching for RVI information on the internet, 
and there really is not a lot. In fact, if you go on YouTube and you search for relative volatility index or RVI, <clears throat> there's really nothing. In fact, the only long video that I found that supposedly covered RVI was by someone, uh, I think from Pakistan or India, and he had such a thick accent that to me it actually kind of sounded like he was speaking maybe uh, in Indian and then in English kind of back and forth and it was very hard to understand. Outside of that one video, I don't see anything else really on the internet that talks about RBI. And it's really the kind of my specialty. Again, it's very similar to RSI, but there are a lot of um, idiosyncrasies and things that um, I've picked up over the years that um, I will be sharing in the course. So yeah, I think that's the key. You've you've identified a very unique way to utilize specifically RBI in the context of prediction points and all the other levels that go with it um, mm -hmm. to have a, a defined system. It's not as though you just take RBI, you put it on your chart and trade that. There's there's a there's a system and methodology that goes to that. Yeah, it, it started like that where all I did was look at that and um, over developed over the years yeah so yeah um and so so just you want to go to the next slide so a couple yeah. couple other things uh so for anyone so how to sign up for the course click that so the cost is 997 for the four-week course you get um like justin said it's it's a four-week course two sessions per week each training session will be about 90 minutes interactive uh, and then there's a live trade room essentially that you you guys will go through and, and do real live examples for 60 minutes each week. Um, after the course, I know Justin is is going to be setting up a live trade room as well, and uh, mm -hmm. and so we'll be we'll be getting that set up. And and just I don't know if we mentioned this at the beginning, but Justin is also one of the um, elite coaches of Day Trade Like a Pro and does one on one coaching. So. Uh, make sure everyone is aware of that. Yeah, yep. Um, and let me just say, um, if you are going to join us in the course, I really hope you uh, consider it because I think um, the, the concepts that I'm going to share with you are, are really going to help with your trading. Um, but I, I'm going to be available to you. Uh, however many questions you have, um, I want to make sure that you understand everything thoroughly. And so I'm going to give you guys my all for that whole month. Um, so I'm really hoping that you guys are interested. Great. And then, uh, so the, then the next thing that we're offering, um, this is specifically for people that have not done trials with us before. Um, if you haven't tried out prediction points, we're offering prediction points for free for 30 days. You get unlimited access to all the markets, which is the EF, the NQ, gold, uh, the Dow, and RTY. Uh, if I mentioned all those appropriately you have when you get access to that you get you get access to our members area all the detailed training around the strategies around that you get access to our discord channel which is uh where all of our elite traders are talking about the best trades of the day and then there's also the opportunity if you want to follow our live trade signals which are the the best trades of the day called out specifically by ephraim uh you can try that for a hundred and forty seven dollars a month and yeah, let me just say that uh, for, that, for that let me just say that Ephraim he actually will post the exact uh entry in the market and he'll post where you want to put your stop and where you want your targets to go and so it's like a, a great way to get an introduction to managing trades on the market absolutely absolutely and so, so for everyone, hopefully you guys can see the handout um, as part of this. If you can't see it, uh, don't worry, you'll get an email with this. We have recorded the webinar. We're going to send out a webinar to everyone who's here, who's here today. And uh, you'll have the opportunity to sign up for uh, Justin's course uh, and or the uh, free trial prediction points uh, through those emails as well. Yeah, and it's really a great offer because um, you'll be in my course where we're covering prediction points. So you'll have that entire month where you're also going to have the prediction points on your end. And you can also just watch how they work on, on your, you know, your own time. Um, I do want to finish things up here and just point out that I am planning 
to do a live trading room. And in this trading room, I'm going to be calling um, calling trades. I'm going to be sharing my chart so you see me drawing everything on there and you're seeing where the entries are. And ultimately, we'll have we'll meet before the open and have a pre-market analysis. Uh, a part of the course is I'm going to teach you how you can forecast the open and get a good idea of what's going to happen right out of the gate. Um, and so you'll have trade calls. Obviously, there's going to be education and market commentary because I'm going to be talking about the setups. And so um, on top of that, I also have a few spots left for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, now, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any intention of getting 10 or 20 people. I want to find a few people who are really dedicated and really want to make the commitment to become professional traders. And so if you're interested in that, you can go to this daytradelikeapro.com slash Justin. And you can, there's a query form, I believe, at the bottom. And you can um, let us know that you're interested so we can set up a meeting. Obviously, I want to talk to you, get to know you, and things like that. And um, yeah, I think with that, um, I think that's it. Is uh, Ephraim or, or uh, Dave, you have anything else to say? No, I think that covers it, unless there's any other questions from anyone. I yeah, would just say, questions? Justin, thank you for taking time out of your day. Guys, oh. the, um, there's, there's not a lot of, you know, I mean, this, what Justin has done is he's put in, I mean, Justin, do you have a, an estimate of how many hours you think you've put in? Um, well, let's say I look at the charts every single day from, the, from before the open to the close in the Globex for uh, probably four and a half years now. With the yeah. with these type of things on my chart, yeah, and you know he didn't wake up and become a successful trader on day one, and so I know that there were you know there was a long period where you're waking up at five in the morning and you're not making any money, but you're still putting in the time and you're working to get better, and yes. um, you know so to have somebody who's willing to sit there with you, I mean first of all in the course trading one on uh, you know trading together going over everything that he's looking for. You have the ability to network with other people that are in the course. Uh -huh. And, you know, what you're going to get is a part of the Discord community and a part of being in the course with Justin. It it really is a phenomenal value. I mean, to offer it for a thousand bucks is kind of, I mean, it's really kind of funny. It's <laughs> something that we could do for 10 or 15 or $20,000 and you would get all the value out of it. Um, but you know, we wanted to do something that's really going to help as many traders as possible. And then the reality of it is, is that we hope that a number of you will continue on and maybe do the live trade room and trade mm -hmm. um, in the mornings with Justin and continue to learn what you, you know, applying what you learned uh, there. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, I think it's a gift to be able to have somebody like Justin who's put in all the time and all the work that he's had, he's willing to work with you. So um yeah, that's yeah. so. Thanks for that, Justin, and thanks for doing the course. And if uh, I don't, I don't have anything else to say. Thank you all for being here today. Yeah, and thanks. that's all I have to say about it. Yeah, I appreciate the uh, opportunity here, um, Ephraim and and Daichi like a pro um, and Dave. Uh, so thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks, guys. Hopefully, I'll see thank you soon. You. Bye, -bye. Right, bye. Bye.